Welcome to this week's Planet Shakers podcast. Planet Shakers Conference Presence 2024 is coming up on the 11th, 12th and 13th of January with powerful guest speakers Sammy Rodriguez, Art Boshoff, Jason Lozano and Reggie Dabbs. Registrations are just $50 for adults and $20 for kids. You can get your registrations at the hub or online via register.planetshakers.com. Now to this week's podcast. I want to preach to you then... Um, on the topic this morning, burning brighter. Come on, God is a God of passion. And, and uh, I, I just know it's His desire for us to be filled with the kind of passion that flows from the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about the kind of passion. Would you, would you care to stay, Jansen? That'd be awesome. Thanks, mate. Not talking about the kind of passion that we have to stir up. I'm talking about the kind of passion that the Holy Spirit never runs out of. Isn't it just refreshing to know that this isn't based on your strength? None of this is based on our strength or our ability or our Christianness. Although of course, as the Holy Spirit flows through our lives, we're filled with the the kind of good fruit that comes from Him. But it's just never, it didn't start that way. It's not gonna be completed that way. And no day in between is gonna be lived that way. It's still not based on our strength but He never runs out of strength. He never runs out of passion. He never runs out of of fire because He is that great consuming fire. The Bible says in Romans 12 verse 11, it says, Never be lacking in zeal. Everybody say zeal. No, don't worry. Not zeal, zeal. But keep your spiritual fervour Serving the Lord. Let's, I got distracted by my own self there. So let's try that again. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. What an awesome Scripture, amen? This life is not meant to be, you know, imagine if I had a, 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 a carbonated beverage up here and you know, when you, when you break the seal and there's that little sound, you know that sound? Come on, this life, filled with the Holy Spirit isn't meant to be flat. It's not meant to be without bubbles. It's meant to be filled with the, with the Spirit. And as He fills your life, come on, He stirs and He wells up within you to eternal life, bubbling over with, with that overflowing life, overwhelming life. And He wants to fill you with His passion again this morning. I wanna just jump through a few things here because I know God wants to do some things in our heart this morning. So let me just remind you that God is a God of passion. Can I get an Amen? Amen. God is a God of passion. He's not complacent. He's not indifferent. Maybe um, you're new to the character of our great God, but the God that we've been worshipping, He's not indifferent and complacent. He's not running out of passion. He is so demonstrative in His passion. Uh, Let me give you a few examples. Jeremiah 31 verse 3, The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I've continued my faithfulness to you. That's the language of passion. Hosea 11, I love this. How can I give you up, O Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I make you like Admar? How can I treat you like Zeboam? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my burning anger. Again, can you see He's a God of passion and He's not afraid to communicate His passion. Isaiah 9 verse 7, speaking of Jesus, it says, of the increase of His government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over His kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. His passion will accomplish this. God is a God of passion, Amen. And God doesn't run out of passion. Even Isaiah 40 says that He never grows tired or weary. I love that about God because I know that I do. If we were to be honest in, 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 you know, those of us that follow Jesus, if we were to be honest about our Christian walk, I'm sure that we would all put up our hand in response to say there are some days that we don't feel the same level of passion toward the Lord. 
But I'm so glad that even when I, and it's not all about feeling by the way, we'll talk about that in a moment. But I'm so glad that even when I don't, I'm absolutely assured and confident on my heart that no matter what I'm running out of, He never runs out of passion. I never wake up in the morning and wonder, is God less passionate today about me and about my world than He was yesterday? You can be absolutely confident, Planet Shakers. God is not running out of passion. He's not growing old. He's not growing tired. He's not growing reasonable. That's a really important thing to know about God. He's not growing sedate in old age because He doesn't grow tired or weary. He's not growing old. He's filled with passion. God is a God of passion. Jesus, His Son, stirs passion. Jesus demonstrated a life full of passion. Even, you know, um, you know, the whole journey to the cross is sometimes labelled the passion of the Christ. Maybe we don't usually associate uh, that word passion with the idea of sacrifice, but that is the greatest demonstration. The greatest demonstration of passion is not just um, excitement or it's not just exuberance. It's actually the kind of love that would be driven to great personal sacrifice due to the passion that that heart feels or is consumed by. The greatest demonstration of passion is Jesus Christ Himself going to the cross for you and for me. If you've never known that or you've never felt the reality of that today, I ask that the Holy Spirit would open the eyes of our heart today and give us that spirit of wisdom and revelation to understand how loved we are by God, that He would demonstrate His great passion for us in sending His Son to die for us on the cross. Do you know that you are the product the greatest demonstration, you are the product of God's passion. And our beginnings determine what we what we live out of. Come on, you're not an accident. You're not here on this world for no on this planet for no reason. You're not walking through life with no direction. Come on, the whole reason that you are here is because God in his passion has a great love and a great purpose for you. That's a great place to get excited and say amen. That's a great place to let hope rise up in your heart and be restored because he is so passionate about you. And no matter what has happened in your life, no matter the mistakes that we've made, God's not running out of passion. He doesn't say, well, I used to be passionate about it, but you wrecked it. He said, no, it'll never run out. In fact, the demonstration, the reality will only grow stronger the more that you experience. Amen. You are God's passion. You are Jesus' passion. The Father's will is His passion and His will is that we would be reconciled to Him. And if that's what my Jesus demonstrated, then that's what I want to live into, a passionate life. John 10, 10, Jesus said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I came, Jesus says, I came that they, us, may have life and have it abundantly. That word life means Zoe. It's talking about Zoe life. Here's some descriptions of that kind of life. The state of one who is possessed of vitality, or is animate, animated. You know, it's just better than inanimate. You know, somebody that just has no about anything. You know, this man, when, when you know the life of Jesus, it, I just don't feel like it's, there's an injustice that we would be inanimate in our life. And I'm not talking, I know that we all have a different um, expression. Passion comes out in many different ways. But I'm just saying, when, when the kind of life that Jesus was talking about here, that Zoe life, when His life fills your heart and fills your home and fills your life with His kind of life, you can't just stand there still and live the same indifferent life that you were living before. You're filled with a kind of animation in the Holy Spirit that causes everything in your life to come alive. So come on, come alive in the life that Jesus has for you. Let your passion come alive. Let your heart come alive. Let the, let the gifts that God has given you come alive as you fall in love with Him again. Amen. Jesus came to give an overflowing life, not without bubbles not limited, not half-hearted, not mediocre, not complacent, not sedate or boring, but overflowing. 
I just have this theory that you ought to be able to tell that someone has experienced the kind of Zoe life that Jesus was talking about. I grew up in, in church and, and you know, man, I praise God for that, the upbringing that I had, great foundation in the Word, but I would look at some people and I would hear the message, but I would look at the expression or the lack of expression in some people and they would seem to be at odds with, my, like, with what I was hearing. And to be honest, that actually kind of began to stand as a barrier to me receiving the message because I was looking for the evidence in the faces around me. If this kind of Jesus that you're talking about, if He is, if this is true, if this is the reality that you're talking about, surely I should be able to see the evidence on your face. Wow, God's so good. I've got, I've got a little illustration that'll help you with this because honestly, I feel like it does sometimes discredit the great message of the Gospel is that the world is looking to the people that belong to Jesus to say, I wanna see and praise God, we hear testimonies. We have amazing evidence around church and yet it ought to be seen on every single face within our church. It ought to be able to, you ought to be able to look around and worship and see that evidence of God's life in every single person. Are you matching the message this morning? And you're saying, oh, well, I had a bad morning and I slept in sort of thing through my alarm and yeah, the kids were angry and you know, what, and then I was angry. <laughs> here we are, we got here and I know I sort of haven't woken up. Man, even on your bad days, it's the kind of Zoe life that fills your life. Come on, put your bad mood aside. Put your tiredness aside. Put yesterday's failure aside and be filled with the passion that flows from the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on, planet shakers. Let's praise Him this morning. But you know, we, we write some songs and Joth, Joth has taught me many great things in life. But one of them is this about writing songs. I didn't know how to do anything but hit drums at one stage. And now I can do a few more things than hit drums, but not many. But anyway, but he would talk about if we're writing a song and God's given us this theme, then the, the thing is, if you've got a theme for the lyrics, there's no point in having one theme for the lyrics, but a totally different feeling for the music because it's gonna be confusing when you wanna draw people into the message of the song because those two things are not gonna be matching. For example, Jansen, my keys assistant, please play for me a minor six. Oh, joyful. Now our minor chords are more a little bit more emotive. Play for me just a, 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 ma a major one or four or five or something. Ah, happy. Ah. That's minor six again. Minus six again, just go super quick for me. Minus six again, one again, minus six again. Oh. Now do nothing but minor two and minus six for me, just nothing but that. Here's the thing, we're trying to have this message of, oh, isn't God? No, nothing but minus six and negative minor twos, just minor, 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 sad, sad, sad. Just imagine, Jesus is so good. I'm filled with His joy. Are you still being too happy, bro? I need you to go. Thank you. Just go to keys two. It's a wonderful thing. You're gifted for keys two. Here, just give me an example here. I don't know what, what you... Oh yeah. And I shall preach from here, from now on. That doesn't stay in. Hey, Jansen. You're doing a wonderful job, by the way. We appreciate you. Yes, we do. We appreciate you. You make me so happy. I could smile. Be filled with the joy of the Lord today. When you enter His presence, just think about all He's done and you'll be overwhelmed. You'll shout with exuberance and say, yay. You did a wonderful job, but I've got a few pointers for you you might pick up from, from that little demonstration. Here's the thing, don't let that be your life. You're saying one thing, but the feeling, the music your life is playing, is not matching the message that you have. It's confusing to those that are listening going, 
shouldn't I be able to tell from what you're wearing on your, on your life? Come on, if you've got the joy of the Lord this morning, if you know the reality of the Zoe life of Jesus, feel free for 30 seconds just to wear it on your body. Come on, we're in church, you can do it. You can afford to be happy. That's so good. You can afford to be passionate. Now, please don't receive any condemnation with that. You say, I tried to, listen, I've got an upside down smile. Look at my smile. Joth teases me about it all the time. He's like, try and turn it upside down, man. What? I can't, I can't help it. That's just the way my mouth goes. We all show it in different ways, but the passion of the Holy Spirit never runs out, amen. He deserves passion. Let me get to this really quick. Come on, let's just take our seats for a couple more minutes. Let's go back to the Scripture, Romans 12, verse 11. Never be lacking in zeal. I love that word. Nine times it's translated zeal, but 25 times it's translated as jealousy. And when it relates to men toward God, it's speaking of a jealous passion and longing for God. An amazing demonstration, although somewhat violent in the Old Testament of the book of Numbers is Phineas. And, and you know, there was this great compromise in the camp and Phineas said, I cannot stand, I cannot know what I know about God and stand around this compromise and allow it to be displayed. I cannot stand around a display that I know is less than what my God is worthy of. And so he took it upon himself to take matters into his own hands, which was somewhat violent and we don't condone that now. But listen, still that kind of jealous passion toward the things of God. Maybe it's not toward other people. Maybe it's that I won't stand for any compromise in my own heart. I won't stand around things that I see in my own life that are less than what I know my God deserves. I can't stand by and say that'll do. No, that's not the jealous passion that the Holy Spirit has filled my heart with. It's never that will do. It's no, God deserves the very best. I wanna bring in my best. I wanna keep working on my heart with the Holy Spirit until it matches His best. Jesus, this is the greatest demonstration of this again. And He walked into the temple, you know that story, He made a whip and He drove out those that had turned the house of God into a place of business. And what did it say? It says the disciples remembered that statement, zeal for your house has consumed me. Again, Jesus couldn't stand around that demonstration. This is not what my Father is about. This is not what He deserves. And He had to do something about it. Passion doesn't allow you to stand by and not do something about the passion that you have for God. So we can't say, because that would be contradictory, we can't say, I've got great passion, but I'm just gonna stay in my old ways. Passion won't allow you to stay. It won't allow you to be indifferent. It just causes this reaction, this response, I'm going after God. Come on, be filled with new zeal for God today. Be filled with that passion for God goes on and says, keep your spiritual fervour. I also like the word fervour. It actually is talking about boiling water, the kind of heat that boils water. That's fervour. Fervency is, is boiling over. Come on, when, when the Holy Spirit is in your life, we don't just turn the gas on a little bit on the stove. He just turns it all the way up and He says, I want you to keep overflowing. I want you to keep burning brighter. I want you to overflow with passion. Can I ask you a question? If you know Jesus and you've been walking with Him, is there a time in your history where you were more passionate about the things of God than you are today? Is there a time in your life where you've been, there's been a greater hunger for God than there is present in your life today? And if so, why? With no condemnation, but I ask myself that all the time as a challenge to say, Holy Spirit, it doesn't match the message that there would be greater passion at some previous time in my life. The more that I know You, the more this is gonna burn brighter in my life, the more that I'm filled with hunger to know You more, and it's only gonna burn brighter for the rest of my days. So if you say today, well, I'm, yeah, I used, man, I used to be on fire. Well, listen, Today, don't, don't allow the enemy in to fill you with any kind of condemnation to say, oh, because that doesn't empower you to change. Condemnation never does, by the way. It actually holds you down. 
but the encouragement of, of our precious Holy Spirit always enables change because He reminds you of that first love. And He says, come back, let me restore that passion because there's even greater passion for you today. I want your, excuse me, I'm just so full of passion. Allow the, the Holy Spirit to fill you with passion. Amen. Not cold, not lukewarm, not tepid, but filled with fire. And I just felt this during worship, the Holy Spirit restores passion. I began to think about Peter, you know, story of the Apostle Peter, but you know, when he was witnessing Jesus' uh, arrest and, and he denied Him three times. Peter was a passionate disciple. In fact, he was the kind of disciple that could not stop talking and couldn't stop getting involved because of his passion. And yet then when it came to this moment of there was great personal failure, and I'm sure if that were me, there would be some second guessing and some doubting of, whoa, maybe I'm not the person I thought I was. Maybe I can't be filled because I just end up failing. I, I, get it. I end up messing this thing up. Listen, personal failure or at least perceived personal failure stands as a great obstacle to the kind of passion that the Holy Spirit wants to pour out in our lives. So we have to be able to say, Holy Spirit, I, listen, I'm sorry, I surrender that to You, but fill me again, fill me again. Listen, if you say, well, maybe I haven't done my best, maybe I, I wanted to step out in faith, but I didn't have the faith that I saw, thought that I have. Let the past be in the past. Today is a brand new day. His mercies in you every morning. Allow Him to fill you with new passion again. Come on, step out again, go again. There's great destiny on your life, but don't stay in the failure of the past? Or maybe you say, yes, I'm not as burning hot as I once was. I come to church, I'm planted. Maybe I'm even a leader. Maybe I'm involved here or I don't know. Listen, life has an amazing way of making us busy and we, we've got the best intentions, but we busied our way out of that great passion for God. Well, you don't have to go back and cancel everything in your life. You just need to come back to the first love and allow the Holy Spirit this morning to say, to remind you. Because listen, when you're reminded of who Jesus is, you begin to be filled with that passion again. Why don't we stand to our feet? Thanks for joining us today. I hope that your faith was filled and you were encouraged. If you have any prayer requests or want to connect with us further, search for us on our social media at Planet Shakers. We'd love to hear from you.